The absolute value of a number a denoted with a inside these vertical bars is just representing the distance that a is from zero on the number line. Now, because absolute value is representing a distance, then we would say that it is always non-negative. Non-negative. Um, it's not quite as precise to say that it's always positive because a could be greater than or equal to zero. So because it could be equal to zero, zero is neither positive or negative. Uh, so we just say that it's non-negative. Uh, so if we think about the absolute value as a function, right, with inputs and outputs, uh, we can define the absolute value as a piecewise equation. So if we consider values uh, for the input that are greater than or equal to zero, right, so if we're looking at the absolute value equation, absolute value function, so consider things that are going into our equation uh, with a value that are greater than or equal to zero. Let's say something like the absolute value of seven. Uh, the absolute value of seven is seven. Seven is seven units away from zero. So if we're looking at values that are greater than or equal to zero, the input and the output end up being exactly the same. I get out exactly the same thing that I put into my function. So for values of x greater than or equal to zero, my output is just going to be the same as my input. But if we consider something like uh, negative 1.3, numbers less than zero. The absolute value of negative 1.3 is positive 1.3. 1 1.3, negative 1.3 is 1.3 units to the left of zero, but its uh, distance is 1.3. So in this situation, when a value is less than zero, we're going to get out the opposite value. So instead of just getting out the input, we get out the opposite of our input. Um, and so this right here, this definition, is what we can use when trying to talk about absolute value in a piecewise equation. So let's go ahead and try and rewrite these expressions. So there's uh, four expressions here, and we wanna try and rewrite them in an equivalent expression without absolute value. So basically we wanna try and use these conditions to try and find equivalent expressions. So we have the absolute value of x minus one, and we're told if x is greater than one, find an equivalent expression. So if x is greater than one, let's go ahead and just like test a, a value. So let's test like x equals two. So if we test x equals two and we plug it in, let's see what happens in this. So the absolute value of two minus one is the absolute value of one. And we know the absolute value of one is just one. So in this situation, when I plug two in, my result is exactly the same as my uh, simplified argument, right? So once I simplify my argument, I get the same result as what was put in, right? So in this situation, that's telling me that for x values greater than one, the absolute value of x minus one is just going to be exactly the same thing as we have in our argument. So it's giving us the same value. But if I pick a number, let's say, so how, now we're looking at the other side, if uh, absolute value of x minus one, if x is less than one. So again, we can test the value. Um, let's go ahead and test x equals zero. I like to test zero whenever I can, whenever it meets those conditions. Uh, so plug it in, absolute value of zero minus one. That's the absolute value of negative one. We know the absolute value of negative one is just one. So in this situation, my simplified argument gives me the opposite. So for any value of x less than one, when I plug it in, my result is going to be the opposite of what I have. So this tells me that the absolute value of x minus one is equal to the opposite of my argument. Um, and if you wanted to simplify this, you could. You could distribute the negative through to give you negative x plus one, um, but this happens when x is sorry, when x is less than one. Okay, so let's look at another example. So we have the absolute value of three minus x if x is greater than three. So go ahead and test a point again. So let's say, uh, let's test when x is five, let's say. So absolute value of three minus 
5 is the absolute value of negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is just positive 2. So in this situation, uh, my simplified argument is giving me the opposite of what I have in here. So that means that the absolute value of 3 minus x for all x values greater than 3 is going to be the opposite of 3 minus x. Uh, and again, if you wanted to, distrib to distribute 3, you could. And this is for x greater than 3. Uh, what if x is less than 3? So let's go ahead and test again. Again, 0 works in this, so I'm going to test when x is 0. So the absolute value of 3 minus 0 is equal to the absolute value of 3, which is just 3. So my simplified argument ended up being the same thing as, uh, I ended up getting out the same thing as my simplified argument, which means the absolute value of 3 minus x is just going to be 3 minus x uh, for x values less than 3. And that's going to be, um, we're basically going to be using this information to help us kind of redefine uh, absolute value functions. Now, one question is, where am I getting like the 3 from and the 1 from? Why am I picking 3 and 1? Are these just arbitrary random numbers that I picked that I wanted to test? Uh, not quite. So the way that we get these conditions for my argument is by looking at the argument, what's inside the absolute value, and asking ourselves, what makes this 0? What makes this 0? So if you can see in x minus 1, if I plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Same thing here, right? If I plug in 3 to this, right, uh, what makes this 0? Well, 3 minus 3 is 0. And so that's kind of our cutoff point for the absolute value, right? If you think about the absolute value function, we know that it has like a V shape, that V shape, and one side has a positive slope and one side has a negative slope, and there's that one point at which it changes. And that one point, that one x value, is determined by what makes the argument, what makes the inside of the absolute value equal to 0. Uh, so we're going to use this information to help us rewrite an entire absolute value function um, using different conditions. So in this situation, we want to rewrite each of these absolute value uh, functions as a piecewise function. So we're going to look at the different conditions that need um, that we need to consider. But remember, uh, in the last example, we asked ourselves what makes this zero, and that's what we're going to kind of split our absolute value and redefine it. So again, what makes this zero? Uh, x plus five will be equal to zero when x equals negative five. So our function is going to be defined around negative 5. So when x is less than or sorry, when x is greater than or equal to negative 5, or when x is less than negative 5. Um, so if I pick a number that is greater than negative 5, we don't ever really want to use 5 because that's just going to give us 0 and it doesn't tell us too much. Um, so if I want to pick a number greater than negative 5, let's use 0. Plug it in. 0 plus 5 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. So my simplified argument stayed the same. So that means that for all values of x greater than or equal to negative 5, the absolute value is just going to be what we started with on the inside. For x values less than negative 5, let's say we use negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So it changes signs. So we would take the opposite of this, so the opposite of x plus 5. And if you wanted to, you could simplify this by distributing the negative through, and you'd get x plus 5 and negative x minus 5. And that would be for x greater than or equal to negative 5. And this would be for x less than negative 5. And this could be your definition for your piecewise function. Um, either of these is correct. It doesn't really matter too much what you do there. Okay. Uh, now for this one, we have this little plus 3 here, and that actually doesn't impact the, the cutoff point. We still only care about what's inside the absolute value to determine the conditions for our domains, right? So x minus 4, what makes that 0? Well, that happens when x is equal to 4. So that's going to be kind of where we split our absolute value. So we have 
uh, for x greater than or equal to 4 and for x less than 4, what do we have? So if I pick a number greater than 4, let's say 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. So the inside of my, uh, my simplified argument stayed the same as a result of taking the absolute value. So that means that for values of x greater than or equal to 4, this is just going to be what we started with. And then the plus 3 kind of just tacks along for the ride. Uh, for x minus 4, so if I plug in, or x less than 4, sorry, I plug in 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. So the signs changed, right? So that means that my output is the opposite of what I have inside. So we're going to take the opposite of this here and then add 3 to it. Uh, if you wanted to simplify this one, you could. Negative 4 plus 3, that is negative 1. So it's x minus 1. Here you can distribute the negative through, so we'll have negative x plus 4 plus 3, so that'd be negative x plus 7, and this is for x greater than or equal to 4, and for x less than 4. So that would be my piecewise definition for that. And let's look at one more. So in this last one, again, we want to figure out what would make the inside equal to 0. Uh, and this happens, so what makes 2x plus 6 equal to 0? Uh, we can subtract 6 and divide by 2, so that's when x is negative 3. So negative 3 is going to be kind of our splitting point. So we have uh, y equals, and then we have x greater than or equal to negative 3, and x less than negative 3. Okay. Uh, so a number greater than negative 3, we could use 0. Again, zero plus, uh, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 6 is 6. The absolute value of that is 6. So focusing just on what's on the inside, the inside part is going to be the same when we take its out uh, for x values greater than a negative 3. So the output is the same as the input for x values greater than negative 3. Uh, so we end up with the 2x plus 6. Now, this negative is being applied and it's taking the opposite of whatever we get out. So we still get that negative out in front. If we look at an x value less than negative 3, let's say we plugged in negative 4. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. So for the argument 2x plus 6, through taking the absolute value, we end up getting the opposite. But this negative out here means we're going to ultimately take the opposite of that. OK, so if we want to simplify this one, distribute the negative through. We have negative 2x minus 6 for x greater than or equal to negative 3. And then with these negative times a negative, it essentially just cancels, giving us this 2x plus 6 for x less than negative 3. Uh, and this would be our piecewise definition for this absolute value.